Right on, guys. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Perry with Premier Guitar. Um, today, we're taking a little PG spotlight. We're going to take a look at uh, a new Black Volt amp that is kind of takes versatility to the next level. And I've heard a lot of buzz about this amp, so I've been really excited to hear it and check it out. We got Josh and Gio uh, out in Los Angeles today. How are you guys? Hey. Doing well, man. Hey, hey. Doing great. Thanks. Right got our masks in hand. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta do it. Gotta do it. So I know um, you guys are in the middle of a, a session right now, um, recording some guitar tracks. Why don't you tell us about the Hawk, which is your new offering? All right, cool. Uh, well, this is one of the Hawks right here. Um, as in true Black Volt style, pretty much every amp is a one of a kind. Most of the materials we use as far as the cabinetry is uh, recycled, reclaimed, a lot of the lumber is. So it can be 100 year old barn siding or downed houses or whatever, which is fun, changes the tone. And um, the grill cloth on this one is, um, is probably like a 1950s, 1960s uh, Native American blanket, very original, unique uh, vintage piece. And this cabinet is uh, maple, it's solid maple which is nice. It's actually a newer, slightly newer piece. Um, as far as the circuitry, this is about a 15 watt amp and it's got tone and volume and a bright switch, which is kind of a boost and bright. So it gives you more juice, more dirt, all of that. Um, it also, you know, speaking of versatility, it has a half power switch. So it's got an attenuator built into it. And I call it a true attenuator because it's really um, over spec to ensure that it doesn't heat up the back end of the amp, the output section of the amp, which is the output transformer and the output tubes. Uh, we can talk more about that later, but it's a great attenuator that allows you to bring the volume way down. Um, and then as far as the power section, um, it has a class A cathode bias, which allows you to basically use any octal based tube socket. So you're able to put 6V6, 6L6, KT6677, 88, EL34s, and because it's a single-ended power section, which means one power tube, it means it's always on, which is part of the Class A characteristic. So you're here in a full change when you change a tube. It's pretty dramatic. You know, attenuation is great for your bedroom anyway, or if you're recording in a situation like, say, you live in New York City, that's an awesome thing to have on an amp alone. But being able to change the power tube and completely restructure the amp that's pretty incredible, you know. I've heard of amps that, you know, you can swap a tube and, and not have to bias it, but that's just one tube. You, you guys are working with a lot of different tubes here. Yeah, that's it, takes, it takes a lot of science on the front end, and I've been designing this amp for probably about a year, and we literally have to go through and pull the spec sheets from every single tube. So each manufacturer, like, let me grab a tube here, or a couple tubes. Sure. And while you're doing that, um, hey, Josh, what, what tube was in that when we heard the play-in? Because that sounded killer. This is a 6V6 in here right now. So that's what you're hearing. And um, although I don't have this exact Hawk amp um, that, that we're playing out of right now, I do own a Black Bolt, and I've had one for about a year and a half now. And whenever I gig, I swap the tubes out depending on how loud the gig's gonna be. So I, like, I'll like i move to 6L6 as if we're outdoors and I need more volume and I know I'm playing with a drummer. And when I'm going for an indoor gig, I put in 6V6s and it takes, I mean, literally like five seconds. It's, it's awesome. It's, I, I pretty much swap it out every single time I take the amp out. Oh man, how fun is that? And it's so easy. <laughs> like, I, it's awesome. I'm not like the biggest like tech guy that likes to get in and it's so simple that like even an ignoramus like myself <laughs> can just pop it right in, go to the gig and and be fully happy with like, you know, getting more dynamic range or having more clean headroom depending on what tubes you put in. So, for everybody uh, watching this at home, uh, let's let's talk about signal change just so everybody gets a fair fight and ha has a good ear for what's happening. We heard that amp on the play in with a 6V6, right? And then what do you guys, uh, well, another thing is you guys have a, you put a 10 inch speaker in the Hawk, right? Yeah, normally it's a 10, yeah. That's cool, and so just out of curiosity, why did you go with a 10 and not, you know, a 12 is pretty standard for guitar amps. I happen to love smaller, like eight and 10 inch speakers. I think they are just punchy and awesome. But what was, was the power structure of that amp part of the decision making into what speaker that you went with in that cab or was it just a preference? Yeah, I think um, for the, Basically, the, I mean, Black Bolt's only been Black Bolt for about six years, so we're a fairly new company. And my, uh, my, my vision has always been to take like tweed style deluxe amp, that's a great amp, and kind of power it up, give it more clarity, more volume, 
but great distortions, but then I feel like those amps don't really give you the, the teeth of like Marshall style amps. So, you know, there's always this balance of like great clean tones with the Fender stuff and great overdrives with the Marshall stuff. Uh, too low a power on the Fender side, too high a power a lot of times, 50 or 100 watts with the Marshall stuff. So I've tried to find a happy balance where it was like, wow, these really amazing classic tones, really like amazing hand-wired, hand-built stuff that's kind of bulletproof, but find a happy volume level at like 30-ish watts is where most of my other stuff comes in. So the Crazy Horse amp, which um, these two amps, right? Well, this is actually a Crazy Horse right here. The Crazy Horse amp is very tweed style with a Marshall style like channel on top of it. So I've always been right. in this 12-inch world. Usually it's 12, sometimes 212, sometimes I mess with a 15, but it's always, for the most part, a 12. So doing the Hawk, I had a request from a couple different people to, um, to create more of a champ style amp. So right. I started messing with smaller, lower wattage amplifiers, and in doing that, I was like, I don't want to just do a champ that's four, five, six watts. I wanted to do something that was more usable which brought in the half power switch. So it's like, let's take it up to Princeton territory. So now we're in like a Princeton zone and you can take it down to a champ or a Princeton. So you kind of get both and the 10 fit really well with that. So I also real quick, I want to say we're, we're here um, where we're recording, where we're doing the session today is a studio called Palomino Sound. So Black Volt is right across the parking lot, which is where we build everything here, like downtown Los Angeles. We're just east of downtown. And we share a parking lot and share the, the, the campus, as we call it, with Palomino. So Palomino, we just, I just had to walk across the parking lot, bring the amps, and we do stuff over here as much as we can. So Palomino is an amazing studio right here, like on our Black Bolt campus, which is awesome. So thanks to Jason and everyone for hosting us, which is awesome. Yeah, right on. All right, well, super cool. I, how about, let's hear that 6v6 maybe one more time for a bit, and then we can show everybody at home how to you can just swap the tube, right? Maybe you can like start a little cleaner and then push it because you'll hear the 6v6 start to squash because it's a smaller oh, yeah. tube. It's going to like just, you can just bury it, <laughs> you know. Well, let's do it with just the tremolo and then... Uh... So there is also a trim. There's a trim with a trim pedal that you can get the Hawk with, the standard Hawk with no trim or with with the tube bias trim, tremolo as well. So... Good, Josh, great playing, man. That sounded yeah. good. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. From what I've read about this, it's it's pretty damn easy to swap a tube, right? You just turn it off and swap the tube. Yeah, you want to swap that's... a tube? Yeah, let's do it. So what I was saying earlier is there's like all the, like each, each tube has a spec sheet. So it's like if you buy a car, you get an owner's manual. When you look at tubes and you look at spec sheets, they'll say, you know, what the current draw is. If it's one amp of current, you think like you look at a... Um, a fuse on a on an amp, it's like maybe a two or three amp fuse. So one one KT sixty six can draw as much as one amp of current. So it starts pulling a ton of current when you put a bigger tube in. So we have to basically look at all of the different um, requirements for different tubes and then and then bias it correctly. And being a, a cathode bias, it's not an adjustable bias. We have to basically make the amp strong enough to withstand the heat and the voltage, the current, the wattage, all of that stuff. So in making it able to do that, there's a lot of sort of R&D that goes into making it uh, go that way. Sure. Let me play a couple chords. I'm gonna play a couple chords, just really just open chords like this on the bridge pickup, and then we'll swap tubes so we'll we have go an to absolute a, direct comparison. We'll go to a KT66. Okay, so this is still, okay, this yeah, is still awesome. with the tubes that we already have in there. I'll play a couple of open chords so you can really hear them. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So I'm gonna put on my I'm gonna Killer put on toe. my UL approved um, gloves here because that tube is hot. Yeah, I'm sure they get pretty cooking, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they get really burning hot. But one of the one of the cool things about these amps as he's swapping this stuff out is the fact that so much of this is taking high quality products that were already in existence, like Barnwood and stuff like this, that's like 
you are truly using that, that sort of secondhand mentality that I think has really started to burgeon in the last 10 years of like people realizing like we have great jeans and shoes and amps and wood and all these things that are ex around in the world and pre-existing and sort of giving them a second run at life. And to me, that's, right. a, that's a really big factor for these amps, like having these amazing grill cloths that who knows where it would have ended up. It might have just ended up at some random thrift shop sitting and getting dust for years on end. And, and now, landfill. or a landfill. And, and the fact that now we get to see these beautiful like Persian rugs and Native American rugs and like African mud cloths and all these incredible fabrics with natural hand dyes Stuff that you really, it's hard to find, but Geo knows where, where to get it. You know, you really got to hunt yeah. through Rose Bowl and all these crazy places where people just have stuff sitting around, and you have to know what to look for, and Geo spent years sort of getting that aesthetic taste down to a T and knows what right. fits the amps. Yeah, I mean, the aesthetic is beautiful. You can't deny that, but beyond that, the money you're going to save in cartage if you're making a record, that's like 10 amps in one, man. That's so cool, you know? So this this amp is this amp is uh, they're they're all different. Some of them look like they're beat up and pulled out of a barn. They look like they're ancient and really relic them, or the wood's already relic. This one's much cleaner. It's much more classy. I mean, you might say you could put this in like a nice Beverly Hills home, you know, <laughs> as opposed <laughs> yeah. to like the real rustic, you know, rock and roll relic stuff. So anyway, um, this tube is that we're putting in. It's a KT sixty six. It's a Gold Lion, and Gold Lion reissued the, well, basically Electro Harmonics reissued the Gold Lion. So the Gold Lion amongst the guitar geekery crowd, um, the Gold Lion was kind of famous for Eric Clapton using him in his Blues Breakers on, on a, right. a, quite a stint of him, you know, recording. I don't know exactly which recordings it was, but um, very famous tone. And um, so Electro Harmonics, who's doing an amazing job, they've taken over the entire tube production, I probably shouldn't tell people this, but <laughs> uh, pe people, but other amp makers, whatever. Electro Harmonics is doing a really amazing job making tubes, reissuing faithful reproductions of tubes like this that sound amazing, they're really dependable, they're high quality, um, so I really, really am stoked with Mike Matthews, and Mike's a super great guy, and has been doing it forever, the guy with the crazy hair and the cigar, you know. Oh yeah. He's amazing. Mike is great. And yeah. they oversee all this <laughs> production. Great. So so this is a Gold Lion reissue of the KT-66. Well, why don't I do some sort of mid-60s Clapton-y yeah. John Mayall era. Yeah. Sort of like, I'll play a couple chords just to open it up to give us that reference back. <laughs> feels like that was like 10 db more yeah it was like way bigger yeah i gotta i gotta admit that's a lot louder than i expected <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty pretty yeah it's, it sounds that sounds killer all right so um a couple of things before we wrap this up geo as a builder what's your favorite tube in that amp my favorite tube uh, the KT-66 is probably the biggest. To get a little amp like this to be this big a sound, it's pretty impressive. But the EL-84 is great too because uh, you get about a solid 15 watts out of the output of that amp. But there's a, um, a yellow jacket that's an adapter. So you can put an EL-84, which is very Voxy. So like a Vox uh, AC-30 had two EL-84s, a Vox AC-15 had one. So. Uh, or sorry, I had two of those. So you can get like seven watts out of one of those. And then if you hit the half power switch, which I'll do, there's a little half power switch. So Here, I'll play, I'll play it once again. Play a little more, so that's yeah. half. Dern. 
Yeah, that sounds, that sounds super killer. All right, so uh, here in a second, Josh, I'm going to have you play us out. But before I let you guys go, I, I think it's kind of important to bring something up. The fact that you're making this, it's all hand-wired by, by you, I'm guessing, right, Gio? Totally hand-wired. I make about, I make about 80% of the hand-wiring. I have one guy that works with me that helps me build as well. That's awesome. So all hand-wired in the United States, right there in California. We make everything here, including the cabinetry. Everything is right here on site. This, this comes in just at what, like two grand, right? The one with the trim is two grand, $19.99, and the standard without the trim is $17.99. It's a great sounding amp. Both, both tube setups sound really, really good. Everybody, this is Perry, again, with Premier Guitar. Uh, check out Black Volt Amps. Uh, YouTube, online, I'm sure you guys have socials and all that stuff. Yeah, our Instagram um, is our main thing. Right on, right on. All right, well, Josh, play us out. Let's hear it. Thanks. All right, man. Thanks, Perry. Thanks, Pleasure, man. Nice talking to you. Great chatting with you.